Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. Now we move on to section 2.4. First hop redundancy protocol, which is part of chapter 2 of CCNA semester 3. Default gateway limitation. If a router or router interface that serves as a default gateway fails, the host configured with the default gateway are, are isolated from outside network. Imagine that this is um, this switch here is our default gateway. We have configured this as to be our default gateway. Now we have another working default gate. We have another gateway, but this is our default. But we have another gateway here. They can go to the internet. For example, this interface fails. This PC, there's no any way it can reconfigure itself to start using this as a default gateway. So that's it. that causes one problem, one big problem. So a mechanism in, is indeed needed to prevent alternate default gateway in switched networking uh, where two or more routers are connected to the same VLANs. End devices are typically configured with a single IP address for default gateway. This address does not change when network topology changes. So this address does not change when the network topology changes. If that default gateway IP address cannot be reached, the local device is unable to send packets off the local network, even if redundant router exists that could serve as a default gateway for that segment. Like I said, this is our default gateway. But we have another router here that could serve as our default gateway. But because we have configured that PC address with the IP address of this gateway, there's no way we can change it automatically to another address. Router redundancy. One way to prevent a single point of failure at the default gateway is to implement a virtual router. So here, for example, we have our, like before, we had our default gateway. And this is our one alternate gateway, which is not a default. But we create these virtual routers where these two gateways, they keep these virtual routers. And all our PCs, they point to this virtual router. So for as long as this virtual router is alive, then everything will be going through either this router or the secondary router. If this router fails, then the packets will start following through this way. To implement this type of router, redundancy, multiple routers are configured to work together to present the illusion of a single router to the host on the on the LAN. So on the LAN, these hosts here, they don't they don't know that this router exists or this router exists. They only see the virtual router. The virtual router is alive because this router here on the left is alive or the router on the right is alive as well. If this one fails, then this router will take over the virtual router. By sharing an IP address and a MAC address, two or more routers can act as a single router. The IP address of the virtual router is configured as a default gateway for the workstation on a specific IP segment. So for example, the, the devices, the end devices, the default gateway is not configured. That IP address or that IP address is the IP address of the virtual router. The ability of a network to dyna dynamically recover from the failure of a device acting as a default gateway is known as a first hop redundancy. So, the ability of a network to dynamically recover from the failure of a device acting as a default gateway is known as first hop redundancy. So, we have a different protocols for first hop redundancy. Step for router failover. When an active router fails, the redundant protocol transition the standby router to the new active role, router role. These are the steps that take place when the active router fails. So for example, here we have router, these are physical router, router one and router two. These are the physical router. They are keeping this virtual router alive. One router will be the active router and the second router will be the, active, uh, the, the backup uh, or, or a standby router. So if the active router fails, the standby will become the new active. The standby router stops sending hello messages from the forwarding router. The standby router assumes the role of the forwarding router. So the stand, first, first of all, let's just uh, the, the active router will send hellos. Now the standby router, if it stops seeing those hellos messages coming from the forwarding router, 
the standby router assumes the role of the forward router. So the standby router will become the new active router. Because of the new forwarding router assumes both the IP address and the MAC address of the virtual router, or the host see no disruption on the service. First hop redundancy protocol is a Cisco proprietary protocol. It uses a group of routers of selecting an active device as a standby and a standby device. So for example, let's go back here. We have a, a physical router, active router and standby router. They are keeping alive this virtual router. In a group of device interfaces, the active device is a device that is used to root for routing packets. The standby device is a device that takes over when the active device fails or when the preset conditions are met. The function of HSRP standby routing is to monitor the operation status of the HSRP group and to quickly assume packet forwarding responsibility if the active router fails. HSRP from IP version 6, Cisco Propriety, first hop redundancy protocol provides the same functionality of HSRP but for the IPv6 environment. Then we have an open standard, a non proprietary protocol. It's a virtual router redundancy protocol, version 2. This allows several routers on a multi access link to use the same virtual IPv4 address. In a VRRP configuration, one router is elected as a virtual router master, with all, all other routers acting as a backup. In case the virtual router fails or the master router fails, the backup will take over. VRRP version 3 provides the capabilities to support IPv6 and sorry IPv4 and IPv6. VRRP version 3 works in multi-vendor environment and is more scalable than VRRP version 2. Gateway load balancing protocol is another Cisco proprietary first hop redundancy protocol that protects data traffic from failed router or circuit. Like HSRP and VRRP while also allowing load balancing also called the load sharing between a group of redundant routers. GLBP for IPv6 is Cisco proprietary FHRP providing the same functionality of GLBP but in IPv6 environment. ICMP router discovery protocol IRDP selected in RFC 1256 is legacy FHSRP solution. RDP allows IPv4 hosts to locate router that provides IPv4 connectivity to other non-local IP networks. So HSRP is a Cisco proprietary and its group number from 0 to 255 are only significant to an interface. HSRP virtual MAC address is a range of quad zeros, then 0C07, dot AC and XX where the last 8 bits represent the standby group. For example, those two X's, they will represent your standby group. All this is in hexadecimal, yeah? So, for example, group number 10 will be 0A, and group number 16 will be 10, yeah? HSRP priority ranges from 0 to 255, default is 100. So, for example, whoever has the highest uh, priority will win. Right, will become the active router. The default hello time is 3 seconds. Hold on time is 10 seconds. So remember the active router will send the hellos to the standby router every 3 seconds. So hold on time is 10 seconds. So if I don't receive 3 hellos, that's it. I will take over as an active router. Preempt is not enabled by default. Preempt means that, okay, if I have a higher priority but for some reason I went down and the, the yellow one, somebody else became an active router. When I come back online, what do I do? Do I just sit there, even though I have a higher priority, or I don't? If preempt is enabled, you don't. You'll take over right away as an uh, active router. Cisco devices by default use a plain text string Cisco for authentication. Plain text or MT5 authentication can be used. Active router election, the highest priority wins. The high, if the priority is the same, we have not changed it from default to 100, then the highest IP address wins. The router priority will decrement by the associated value, so 10 will, dec decrement, will decrement by 10 for the tracked interface. HSRP multicast to all routers addresses the 224002 on UDP port 1985. 
to configure HSRP, well, imagine that we have router A and router B with IP address as you can see on the screen 10.1.1.1 for A and 10.1.1.2 for B. Say, like normal, do the configuration interface FA00, give an IP address, not shut down. As soon as you say standby 1 and give an IP address, what you're doing there is you're creating the virtual router. Now, the virtual router uh, will get an IP address 10.1.1.10. This IP address now you 10.1.1.10, you give it as a default gateway for the client machines. So same number on both neighbors. So all the neighbors, they have to have the same IP address if they want to keep alive that virtual router. So standby IP 10.1.1.10, uh, router B will keep that virtual router alive. Now we need to have an election. If we leave it as the default, the router with the highest IP will win, will become the active router, which is router B on this instance but we can change the priority so default is 100 so if we do priority 110 we are making sure the router a has is becoming the active router so the active so standby one preempt means for some reason if router a fails then router b will become active but if router a comes back then we want router a to become again the active router in HSRP version 1, the group numbers can be valued between 0 to 255, but must be the same on both neighbor routers. If the router do not have a preamp configured, a router that boots up faster than the other in the standby becomes uh, group becomes the active router, regardless of the configured priority. The HSRP verification shows standby. Show standby is going to tell us quite a lot of information. We can see the state. The state is active. Virtual router's IP address 10.1.1.20. Sorry, in this one 10.1.0.20. Secondary, secondary virtual IP address. Um, standby router. Who's the standby router? What's the priority? So an HSRP active router has the following characteristics: responds the default gateway ARP request with the virtual router's MAC address. Assumes the active forwarding packets of the virtual router. Sends hello messages known as a virtual router IP address. An HSRP standby router has the following characteristics. It will listen to the for periodic hello messages, assumes active forwarding of packets if does not hear any uh, from the active router, use, use the show standby command to verify the HSRP state. In the figure, the output shows that the, the router is active state. Okay, this has been Asri Krasniji.